Hey everybody. Uh, tonight I wanted to do a video uh, to address some of the questions that people have when they contemplate switching from disposable mainstream menstrual products over to cloth pads and alternatives. They're the kinds of questions that most people are uncomfortable asking, uh, especially in a public kind of situation, because uh, we've all been trained that these are, you know, taboo sorts of subjects. Um, but these five questions get asked over and over again, um, so let's get right into it. The short answer is yes, cloth pads absorb enough. Uh, like disposables, however, yes, they can leak uh, if you're not responsible about changing them out as frequently as you should. Uh, one of the first things that you'll notice when you change over to cloth pads, however, is that there's this world of variety out there that probably never occurred to you uh, before you've heard of cloth. Um, there are different shapes, lots of different shapes, uh, different lengths, um, lots of different materials used in different parts of the pad to accommodate different needs and different problems, body shapes, body sizes, underwear preference. Um, if you have a, a typical leaking problem, uh, like you need more in the front, there's a pad for that. If you need more in the back, there's a pad for that. There are options available to you that you probably never even considered. Um, this is a cloth pad. It is my very favorite cloth pad and I'm going to be using it in demo several times in this video. Uh, so the information about where you can get it uh, if you want one like this, and I highly recommend them, uh, is down in the description. The topper part that goes next to your skin, um, variety of fabrics out there for that. Um, the backing, of course, with the leaking and absorption question is usually one of the most important, um, and most pads you'll find have something water resistant or waterproof on the back. Um, this is anti-pill fleece, which is a really commonly used material, um, and I have never leaked through this pad. Um, it is not waterproof, it is only water resistant. For waterproofing, um, the most commonly used material that I know of is PUL, which stands for polyurethane laminate. Uh, and it's 100% polyester on one side and has a 100% waterproof uh, polyurethane on the other side. Um, and that was a fabric actually that I think was developed for diaper or nappy making. Anyway, there's lots of choices. Um, and yes, you can find one that absorbs enough and solves your leaking problems. Uh, yes, they can leak, but they are far less likely to do so than a disposable would. Like with disposable use, um, when you're away from home, uh, you will carry a pad with you uh, in case you have to change. Um, you know, if you go to work, you're going to take several with you, uh, just like you would with disposables if you go to school or, or just out to the store, what have you. Uh, and there are several different ways that women like to uh, deal with that, but most of them include something that we call a wet bag. Um, you can get a wet bag or a wet dry bag. Uh, basically what that means is it's a bag that has some kind of um, waterproofing on it. You can Honestly, you can go to Walmart, Target, you know, uh, in Europe, like a star like Sainsbury's or Tesco or M&S, and, and you can get like a cosmetic bag that has a, a plastic lining in it. And it's just, you know, to keep the, the pads clean while you're in transit. Um, and what you do um, is you typically would fold them in half, and then most have a snap closure like this, and you just snap them behind the, the thing, easy peasy. You put your clean ones in, uh, <gasps> one side and you put your soiled ones in another. Uh, when you take a soiled pad off, you know, you take the soiled pad out, you fold it in half so that you're not, you know, having to touch anything that you don't want to touch. And then you snap it closed and you would put that in your little cosmetic bag. It's very discreet. Nobody knows what this is. You can even take it out of your bag at school or at work and nobody's going to wonder what you've got. Um, they also have these, which are similar to the pad wrappers, you know, the plastic pad wrappers that you do, some ladies like to keep those and, and roll up the dirty one or whatever. Um, these are little cloth pad wrappers, um, and you, they're made to just put one cloth pad in, and you can keep your clean one in here in your purse, like your emergency pad in your handbag, uh, so that it stays clean. Um, and that's pretty much what you do. Um, it's really no muss, no fuss. It's not any messier or any less discreet um, than using a disposable. And I think most ladies will feel me when I say the ripping sound in the stall in a public restroom. You don't have to deal with that ever again. It's not like you're going to be announcing to everybody in the ladies' room that you're changing a menstrual pad anymore. And so 
that gets thumbs up from me. Again, the short answer to this is no, it's really not a, a dirty or a filthy or an unpleasant job at all. Um, it's actually quite easy. Um, for me to actually go into the process that I use to clean my pads or the different ways that women out there typically do, there's several different common ways that people choose to clean and launder uh, their soiled uh, cloth pads. Uh, and I don't really have time in this application to to really get into that. But what I will say is that almost all of them involve a, a larger version of the smaller wet bag I was talking about. Um, most of us, um, not everybody, but most of us have a, a wet bag like this. This one is 10 inches by 11 inches. In fact, I love this one. I just got it. Um, and they usually come with like a loop because people will hang it on the side of the, the toilet roll dispenser or on a towel dispenser or whatever. Uh, I'm sorry, a towel. Um, bar uh, on the wall um, while they're on their cycle that's within reach so that they can just take off their soiled pad you know like I said before you fold it in half you snap it and then you unzip and then you just put it in here and you put all your dirty ones in here and they stay here uh, until it's time to, to clean them and the comment about it being an unpleasant kind of thing the only thing in my previous life experience that I can liken it to is that when I was pregnant for the first time and I thought, you know, I don't think I can handle changing diapers. That's filthy. That is so gross. I, I can't do that. And I actually spent most of my pregnancy really worried that I was going to be a terrible mother because I couldn't change diapers. I mean, I was just, I was appalled. I was, you know, like gagged by the, by the concept of it. And then the baby was born and it just was no big deal. It was just not a big thing at all. And I'm like every other woman who is contemplating a reusable menstrual thing for the first time. I, I, I had the same, oh my God, you want me to wash that? It's really not that big a deal. Um, staining is just not what you think it's gonna be. You know, you think that it's just gonna be like murder scene and it's not. It's really not that bad. Uh, and I promise that I will get more into cleaning and answering your questions uh, that are specific to how does the mechanics of all this keeping them clean thing work. But no, they're not dirty. They're actually cleaner and better for you. They're better for your body. They're better for your skin. Um, there's less chance of you getting some kind of a problem because of the pad that you're using if you're on cloth. They are not dirty and it really isn't onerous. In fact, most of us kind of sheepishly start admitting after a few months doing this that we enjoy taking care of them because we like them so much. Um, and, and I'm one of those. I actually, I don't necessarily look forward to cleaning them, but I don't mind it at all. Um, so that's the short answer. This one is super easy. No. No, they don't smell bad. And this was like, other than, you know, all of my skin problems clearing up uh, shortly after I switched to cloth, this was my favorite part um, because I just, the smell that we get used to um, from disposables, I, I think because we use disposables from day one, we assume that the menstruation process, that menstrual fluid itself, smells bad. And here's the great news, it doesn't. It has no smell whatsoever. There's no smell at all. There's nothing. That was like the biggest surprise to me. It's like Merry Christmas, there's no smell at all. I, I was shocked. I really thought, wow, all these years I have put up with that raunchy garbage bin full of these disposable things every time I have a cycle, you know, and I was one of those people, I, mm -mm, I, I would avoid going in there because I didn't like the way that you will never smell that ever again after you switch to cloth. So no, they don't smell. They don't smell at all. Clearly I'm excited about that. Um, now there is one caveat. There are women who have certain, uh, chemical con, uh, not chemical condition. That's not the right way to put it. Um, some people's pH balance is different. Um, there are actual conditions like, um, I think it's called, um, 
bacterial vaginosis, that's what it's called, um, where there can be um, an innate natural odor that comes from the body. Um, but m most women who don't have one of these conditions and most people with normal body pH ranges, um, so pretty much most people, no. No smell. Yay. <laughs>is a little bit harder to answer with an absolute, but again, the answer is no. They're not terribly thick and bulky. In fact, um, I'm going to show you here with this guy. Um, this is a yeah regular moderate, uh, and I want you to see it's very, very thin. You see? Very thin. Um, about as thin as a disposable. Um, I used to get the ultra thin because I didn't want to feel like I was sitting on a towel. Um, nobody does. Um, and the vast majority of the pads, in fact, I have an ultra absorbency that has a special fabric in it for absorbency that I can wear overnight um, that will hold probably four times what this one will. Um, and it's the same thickness, uh, exactly the same, because I looked at them, I, was, I couldn't believe it. Um, so no, most of them are not. Um, there are some types out there, and I have avoided purchasing them. I, d I don't have experience with those. There's uh, the Luna Pads brand, um, and there's the Schoon Organics brand that I looked at how those work, and, and they look to me like they would be thicker and bulkier. And I've seen some reviews that say that they are. Um, so really, this boils down to choice. If you pick a pad that's thick and bulky, yeah, it's going to be thick and bulky, but no, um, there are the most, most of the pads that I have seen most, and all of the pads that I've made for myself or purchased have been pretty thin, pretty thin. Um, so thick and bulky is not going to be an issue. Um, if it's a question of, are they going to show through your clothes? You know, are people going to be able to see that I have this on? No. That's, that's not a problem. Uh, there's, there's actually videos on YouTube of people demonstrating in front of the camera um, what their front and back of their pants look like while they're wearing a, a cloth pad of varying absorbencies to prove that, that you can't see through the clothes. So no, that's not an issue. And quite frankly, most of the time when I'm wearing my cloth pads, I can't even feel them. I don't even know they're there, which is so great. You don't have the diaper crinkly. You don't have them sticking to your skin. You don't feel any of that. Um, and no, they're not thick and bulky. Um, I think there are some brands out there that if you bought one, y you might end up with something that's thicker than you wanted. Uh, but for the most part, no. <laughs>